welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Whistleblower Francis Haugen appears before U.S. Congress. Facebook founder pushes back against Francis Haugen. Canadian Prime Minister apologizes for going on vacation during the first National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Israel on the offensive against COVID-19. Nobel Prize awarded to Benjamin List and David W.C. Macmillan. Military nurses sent to Alberta in an effort to control the fourth wave of COVID-19. China flew 56 planes near Taiwan. The National Cathedral rang 700 times in memory of 700,000 Americans who died of COVID-19. To begin, former data scientist for Facebook, Francis Haugen, told the U.S. Congress that Facebook products are harming children and fueling polarization within the United States. She also alleges that the company knows about these issues and although saving face with the public by pretending to address it, has continued to fuel hate and misinformation. That is because it leads to a larger revenue for the company. Before leaving her job, Haugen obtained thousands of pages of internal research which will be used to substantiate her claims. One internal study found that 13.5% of teenage girls stated that Instagram made them have thoughts of suicide, while 17% said it made their eating disorders worse. I used to work at Facebook. I joined Facebook because I think Facebook has the potential to bring out the best in us. But I'm here today because I believe Facebook's products harm children, stoke division, and weaken our democracy. The company's leadership knows how to make Facebook and Instagram safer, but won't make the necessary changes because they have put their astronomical profits before people. In other related news, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook founder and chief executive of the company, has refuted allegations made by Frances Haugen. Regarding her statements that Facebook deliberately pushes content which makes people angry, Zuckerberg argues that this would not be profitable for Facebook. He claims that the ads are the main way that Facebook makes their money and ad companies do not like being next to harmful or angry content. More generally, Zuckerberg has defended the company, pointing to several instances where the company has chosen people over profit. In his view, Haugen's allegations are inconsistent and not true. Turning now to Canada, September 30th, 2021 marked the first ever day of national truth and reconciliation, despite the fact that the Liberal Party leader states that he supports the enactment of this day. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spent September 30th on holiday with his family in Tofino. This has led to major backlash. Since then, he has offered a private apology to Tekamloops Disquapum Nation for failing to accept any of the invitations to mark the day by supporting Indigenous peoples across the country. Many have urged him to make more of a public apology, but we have yet to hear one. Travelling on September 30th was a mistake, and I regret it. The first National Day of Truth and Reconciliation was a time for Indigenous people and non-Indigenous people alike to reflect and connect, think about the past, but also focus on the future. I want to thank uh, Chief Casimir of the Kamloops uh, for the conversation we had over the weekend, in which I apologized for not being there uh, with her and her community uh, for this important day. And I committed to uh, going to visit the Tekamlups Te Suwekmuk uh, community uh, in the coming weeks. There's a lot of work for us all to do, and I'm committed to doing it. I think the how it happened is far less important than that it happened, uh, which I regret. And we will continue uh, to do even more on the path of reconciliation. Over in Israel, millions of vaccinated individuals will soon lose their fully vaccinated statuses unless they're able to get a booster shot. If they do not get this booster shot, they will no longer have access to public spaces, including gyms, restaurants, and movie theaters. Experts say that they are not certain about the use of future booster shots, but they are confident in this next one. The World Health Organization has strongly opposed the use of booster shots because of fairness. They argue that it isn't right to get their third shot when most of the world has yet to get their first. Meanwhile, some experts in the country also oppose this, arguing that decisions about the booster should be an individual one. We faced a choice to either drag Israel into yet another set of lockdowns, further harm our economy and society, or double down on vaccines. 
We chose the latter. In other news, two scientists, Benjamin List and David W.C. McMillan, have won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Their works enable people to build molecules which can make everything from food flavorings to medicine. At the beginning of the century, scientists only had two ways of making molecules, and the works by List and McMillan is cheaper, faster, and more environmentally friendly. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has today decided to award the 2021 Nobel Prize in Chemistry jointly to Benjamin List and David McMillan for the development of asymmetric organic catalysis. Returning to Canada, Canadian military nurses will begin working at Edmonton's Royal Alexandra Hospital to try and alleviate some of the strain on critical care units. Critical care units here have been overwhelmed by COVID-19 cases. Eight nurses from Ontario and Nova Scotia are beginning this work. After Alberta requested assistance from the military, these nurses were scheduled to begin training on October 6th. The military support will be in effect until the end of October. Over in Taiwan, China flies a record number of military flights, 56 planes and 149 flights near the country. They're displaying their military sophistication and increasing their harassment of Taiwan. Meanwhile, the U.S. calls China's latest moves destabilizing and risky. However, China countered these statements by arguing that the U.S. has been selling weapons to Taiwan, which has been a provocative move. Lastly, in Washington, D.C., the National Cathedral rang its bell 700 times this week. The bells were rung to honor the lives of 700,000 Americans who lost their lives during COVID-19. This is not the first time that these bells have rung. They've rung at every 100,000 confirmed COVID-19 deaths. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. This is the International News Channel, and I'm Julia Cosby. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our latest content.